Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, good morning, and welcome to the Think Tech Studios. This is Security Matters, and I'm your host, Andrew, the security guy. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how risky emails become, and is it too risky for your business? Um, I've got a guest in the studio today, a, a subject matter expert on this exact topic, by the way, so I'm, I'm going to get bailed out. Um, <laughs> Hawala Grievous here, a uh, Hawaii guy. Uh, Hawala, welcome. Thanks so for coming true. in, man. Great glad to, to have you, you Glad Thanks to have you in me. here. I know you've been on Hibachi with us and a few things over the years, so um, I'm glad to see you in Hawaii. Yeah. I, know, uh, I know you grew up here. Why don't you give our, give our, give our crew a little bit of your, your background and then how sure. you escaped to California and when you're coming <laughs> back permanent. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Proud McKinley graduate. Um, been doing email since 1999. Yeah. Uh, so if you do anything for 19 years, you better be good at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we're saying. And I'm a founder CEO of Powbox, and we're a startup based in San Francisco, a uh, team of 12, 1,200 customers in all 50 states. And our, you know, our thing is HIPAA compliant email. So we're the easiest way to send and receive HIPAA compliant email. That's awesome. our thing. Awesome. And so I remember when I remember when it was Pow Spam. Yeah. Remember, remember, and and Pow, you know, was like stop spam. Yeah. And now we got. Stop box, or well, tell me how, how POW box evolved out of POW spam real quick. Well, shucks, I figured <clears throat> we'll keep the POW and then box. <laughs> yeah, check the box. Check the box. Cloud box, a cloud basic product. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, when you've got this uh, kind of made up word, you can own the space, uh, which is good to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you type that in, as long as you spell it right, you know, you're only going to find one thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as opposed to um, other products out there that are competing on common words and stuff. I like how it has the the, the Hawaii roots in it still too. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So POW is P. I don't know if I don't think they use that anywhere else on the on the mainland. They know the word well, if they've been here, but. Well, that's funny you mentioned that. Uh, uh, in Hindi, it means bread. Oh, okay. P A U, or is yeah. it spelled differently? Okay. And unfortunately, I learned later in Brazil, it's slang for. Something else. Something, uh, something we're not going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but we have, but in, so in, but it's bread box. Then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, and something else. Yeah. Interesting, cool. Well, um, I have, you know what got me on this topic in particular? I, um, I've been at a lot of conferences this year, and everybody's really talking about the insider threat and yep. how the, the training of their staff to not click on things. And, you know, there's, uh, there's been a lot of work going on on that in that space for quite a while now, and, and ultimately, even with it seems like really persistent training, um, a lot of organizations struggle to get those, those take rates. You know, those people who are clicking just absentmindedly or negligently on on bad attachments or bad links or clicking on things they shouldn't click on, um, down into the the low percentages. You know, two, three, four percent. So you know, one out of twenty or twenty five people in your organization is still quite a bit of a risk. Well, I have some thoughts on that. Yeah. I think when it comes to a business setting, yeah, 1% to 2% of your workforce, because it's a work email account, they just subconsciously try and click any link that comes in because they subconsciously think it's for work. Yeah. So they'll, they'll no matter how much training you give them, they're just going to be like, well, this is work. I need to open this. Yeah, like the company's protecting it somehow, so it must be safe. It came yeah. via, via company or via... Yeah a company associate or whatever it may be. Yeah. yeah, they're not aware of spear phishing and how the how the game works. Or know? even if they are, they they just forget and they just want to open stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> so we we've there was some some discussion that those um those ones who keep forgetting after training, that becomes an HR problem actually, yeah. you know, <clears throat> once you become a risk to your organization cuz you you don't seem to be able to absorb the training or you don't seem to be able to stop yourself or at least examine the link or, or whatever it may be first, you know, yeah. and um, those those training issues, um, I, I don't think that they're going to go away. And I know that uh, businesses are very concerned. The discussion at the higher level in, in in DOD and in regulated industries is that the supply chain, you know, the small SMB, small medium sized businesses um, who don't have necessarily the expertise in house. Um, maybe they don't have the funds to train their people persistently. They don't really have any way to monitor that data. Are going to continue to be vulnerable for this and you know what you don't want is to get you know um, uh, a service guy's you know laptop or service equipment infected and then he's coming into your organization bringing malware inside the enterprise somehow um, and that's kind of the fear that they have and and uh, so 
you know, this is what prompts me to say these things. Well, maybe, you know, organizations shouldn't use email, you know, and there's a lot of, a lot of things that can be done to secure email. So I know you guys have worked long and hard on that. Your business is in providing secure email and HIPAA compliant. Why don't we talk just briefly about the, the scrutiny that goes into HIPAA compliant email? Because sure. that's a, a high level standard. Yeah, so it's a U.S. It's a federal regulation that applies to healthcare, and at a high level, uh, HIPAA compliance when it comes to data is <clears throat> you need to encrypt your data at rest and encrypt in transit. So our product we focus on the transit encryption of email. Okay. And email is such an old protocol of the internet. Um, it was built with deliverability as the highest priority in the SMTP protocol. I see. So it has, it's trying to get there. It's not trying to not get there. <laughs> yeah. And message encryption is a lower priority. Mm. So if either the sender or the recipient are not set up to accept a TLS transit connection, start TLS, the connection downgrades to clear text, uh, unencrypted, Ooh. without either party's knowledge or approval. And that's why um, other solutions out there introduce a tremendous amount of friction, and we've all seen it, right? Um, Andrew sent you a secure email, click here to pick it up. They're forcing you to a portal, which they can encrypt using HTTPS, but unfortunately, um, the, the introduction of friction <clears throat> makes these solutions very cumbersome and inferior. Yeah, they're inconvenient as well, and so um, to go back to TLS, what, what Hawa is talking about is that the, the actual channel pro provides for encryption uh, of while that is in transit and that information is in transit. And if you on the receiving end can't handle that level of encryption, your system may offer a lower level of receipt of that, which is clear text again. So yeah. now this information is exposed and it can be taken or whatever, maybe right off the wire. And what we've seen, uh, ironically enough, um, there's an ocean of email security appliances out there, sp specifically Barracuda appliances that comes shipped by default um, with TLS disabled. So Why would they do that? <laughs> so you, you've got this email security appliance providing you spam and malware protection. <clears throat> you most likely have an exchange server in your office. But ironically enough, that same thing <clears throat> most likely is uh, having all your email sent and received in clear text. And that, because it's misconfigured. It, they should have shipped it with TLS on. They don't. A lot of people don't configure it. And so yeah. our product solves that issue where we, we become, we, we insert ourselves in the middle of the email uh, transit and we guarantee that every email sent for our customers is encrypted in transit. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the value we provide without the friction. Sure, so, so, <coughs> the, so if they're using Office 365, then they are, they're sending their email through you from Microsoft, right? So in, which it's, we know it's encrypted leaving Microsoft to you, it's encrypted, and then you've got it the rest of the way. Yeah. And then if it if it tries to get delivered to someone who cannot handle it, then what happens? We've got a clever workaround where our product uh, detects um, that on the fly, or if the recipient is only accepting low levels of uh, um, security encryption, like SSL two or SSL three, then we're also um, automatically upload that to our secure web app, and then it's just an extra click for the recipient to read and reply. To go get it. So at yeah. least they're not uh, exposed to that vulnerability because their system, per se, hasn't been upgraded or something. No one should be yeah. running SSL2 anymore, things like that. You'd be surprised. Is there SSL3's a lot of it out there? Out there. And so I, I know your team does um, a lot of research. You know, you publish a lot of blogs on, sure. on looking at these solutions. Um, do has is that related only to HIPAA, or have you come across other others like PCI, FERPA? There's a lot, a lot of the organizations that require um, certain protections for the data that they're sending back and forth. So, sure. do you um, what, what what have you seen when you when you're looking around out there? Uh, so, P, uh, FERPA it doesn't have much teeth to it uh, from the regulatory standpoint. So, okay. as a business decision, um, I think HIPAA is a better place for us to be. Um, <clears throat> And it's not quite as strict as HIPAA. And then PCI for credit card compliance, uh, there's some, some stricter standards on that, s more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, and then recently we've been getting pulled in with uh, GDPR um, sure. oh, inquiries. Yeah, I, didn't mention that. I think on May 25th that goes live. So we're carefully evaluating whether we want to be in that market or not. Ah. And, um, Is it more strict than HIPAA? 
from your first first glance or your early it's, research? You know, we're, we're worried about the, <clears throat> the data sovereignty, for one. Uh, okay. we, we just can't be setting up data centers in every country in the EU okay. to service a small account. Uh, we like HIPAA because, you know, you've got one market, one currency, one language, and okay. U.S., right? Yeah, that's a, and, it's a North American standard HIPAA. It doesn't, it's a U.S. Yeah, U.S. only. So, you know, <clears throat> and the whole industry is 10 to 15 years behind. It's just crazy. Like, we're wow. fighting the fax machine. That's our true competitor. Really? Amazing, yeah. So people are still, be, well, because they thought it was, because at least they didn't have to worry about it being stolen off the wire. Well, but I mean, it's just sitting on the on the fax table at that point too. So and the we'll the HIPAA little. regulations, um, according to Department of Health and Human Services, fax is compliant. So that's why these people are still using fax. Wow. They consider it a, a compliant, secure channel, which it may or may not be, especially when you introduce these e-fax solutions where it gets converted to your email. Is that transit encrypted from oh, fax to sure. email? That, well, that, that don't seem like that. I mean, if it is encrypted, I guess it's okay. But what level of encryption? And how do you, what, how do you know that the fax machine's not doing the downgrade like you talked about? Yeah. And then if you've got the paper in the tray, um, that's definitely uh, a HIPAA violation waiting to happen. If you have an on-site audit and you've got protected health information sitting on that tray, uh, that's another. They're issue. sending PHI via fax? Oh, tons. And Millions. That's, that's a HIPAA compliant way to transfer? Is these, are these like small offices trying to send to big hospitals oh, or is it true. big hospitals trying to? You know, this is one of the, the big learnings I've found since uh, starting Powbox. Uh, the level of fax usage in the United States healthcare system is, is mind boggling. I haven't I mean, had a fax machine. In, well, I shouldn't say that. I have one of those. Multifunction Xeroxes, but I don't. It is. Mine. I don't know if we get faxes. I All guess right. we do. Let me ask you. A question. So I, I was at a conference last okay. year, and one of the CIO, there were three CIOs on the panel. So I get my question in. I say, all you CIOs of these hospital systems, how many faxes do you send a month, and do you think that's normal? And they all agreed the the level of faxes they send are just abnormal. None of them knew except one guy. And he's the CIO for about a six hospital system. Wow. So would you care to guess how many faxes they send in a month? For this I one say hospital. A, like system. a thousand. Seven million. <laughs> Seven million? One hospital system. Back and forth? Or like Seven million. Or like I send it to you and you send it to someone else. Like is it is it just chained coming or is out it... of their just coming out of their enterprise? Seven million. <clears throat> how can that be effective? Yeah. And how can it be secure? Or so probably not. That, so we, that, they will go so, unnamed. So for us, HIPAA is just this huge opportunity. Seven million, that's a one page. As if it's seven million pages, that's a lot no, of faxes anyway. Just, no, that's one fax, four pages, could be whatever. whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it would be like 15 million pages. Who oh knows? Oh, my gosh. It's just wow. mind-boggling. Yeah, uh, a lot of opportunity. Is that... That was the legacy means of transferring in? Is that just... That's, it's like it's like survived. Like they can't get rid of it. Like this is what we do, so this is what we do. That kind of thing, or what's the just, attitude? It's just, it's compliant. Uh, it's just, they're just stuck behind the times, man. That's 10, 15 years old. Are these encrypted fax connections? No. <clears throat> Accord, yeah, they're not, but according to HHS, they consider that compliant, HIPAA compliant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, um, we're going to take a short break. We're gonna ponder. PHI going out over facts. This is worrisome. Um, and uh, when we come back, we'll get into maybe some of these um, other mechanisms for protecting data, give you some options if you're not sure about uh, your email security or the training of your folks and, and their ability to handle secure email. So we'll be right back. I'll Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. 
Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asia in Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asia in Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Hey, welcome back to the Think Tech Studios and thanks for joining us on Security Matters. Today we've got Hawala Grevy in the house, CEO of Powbox. We are talking about email security. We're trying to decide if it's too risky for business to use email um, as a, uh, a means of sending information. And we were just talking about the fact that the healthcare industry uh, has a legacy problem with using fax and that fax is actually an approved method uh, for them to transmit documents. So if they get out of the stone age and they stop using those fax machines and, and want to use some secure email like Powbox provides, um, talk about some of the things that can happen there. You know, what, 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 what kind of services can we do for them and how are we, how are we helping? Well, I think the fax machine <clears throat> is the culprit behind a lot of the inefficiencies in healthcare um, data errors because it's, you know, it's it's on a piece of paper. You got to mm -hmm. retype it. Um, yeah, data entry just, problems. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's behind. I think a lot of issues in healthcare. Um, we recently re released our uh, HIPAA compliant email API, so you can think of it like a HIPAA compliant send grid. Okay. Where you can transactionally use our API to deliver um, HIPAA compliant email straight to the inbox of the recipient. Mm. So we're very excited about that, and we think it directly addresses attacks the fax machine. So a company, if you have an app or a portal that no one logs into, you can hook into our API to deliver those meaningful messages, uh, lab results, prescription reminders, what have you, hmm. straight to the uh, recipient's inbox and still be compliant. So we're really excited about that. That's awesome. And are, have you, um, I know you guys have been working in the healthcare space for quite a while. Is that, are the, the big boys paying attention? Are they still using faxes? Or, obviously, I think, I would think the small businesses, the small, like dentist office, doctor's offices, those would need a lot of help because uh, they just don't have, you know, IT people on staff and things like that. So where have you been able to penetrate and get the most, you know, the most support out in the community? Uh, so we started off uh, targeting small SMBs. Uh, you know, you got a shorter sales cycle, um, easier to easier buying decision, keep the lights on, we get the money in, you know, mm -hmm. keep going, get more customers. And now we're, we're moving up the food chain, uh, going to mid-market, and then we have some discussions with some enterprise customers, but <clears throat> you know those are longer uh, sales cycles. Sure. So we got a few Fortune 100s that we're talking to, That's and we're awesome. going to make it happen. Yeah. Can you imagine just the savings in fax paper might uh, might support your the purchase of your solution? You got to have we a little ROI for them there. <laughs> just spent three months writing a white paper okay. on that very issue. Excellent. How much does it <clears throat> cost to send a fax? Yeah. And we'll be um, marketing that quite heavily in the weeks to come. And coming in some shows coming up. So let's so, so we've the fax machine is a nightmare for my, for my brain. Let's talk about what else um, what else you've seen. You know what else um, what have you else have you been able to mitigate? Obviously, you've probably seen attacks kind of coming through your filters and stuff that you guys are doing for these folks. So kind of what's what's been happening in your in your side of the world? So <clears throat> ransomware is still a big issue, especially um, for healthcare. Yeah, <clears throat> last year it was a big issue. It's still a big issue now. Um, we have verified accounts that. These ransomware attacks are getting through uh, the G Suite, Office 365 filters. Mm. I mean, they're they're getting through, mm. and they're they these customers on these platforms are getting breached. Ouch! Department of Health and Human Services has declared as of last year that a ransomware breach is also a HIPAA breach, uh, regardless of how many records were. Yeah, because uh, it used to be related. Really, what, what was it before? Like a <clears throat> thousand records. Five hundred. So 500, they had to advertise that they had been breached and, That's and provide protection for those customers. Yeah. By the way, a healthcare record on the dark web is probably 50, 60 bucks these days versus everybody's worried about their credit card. You can get probably 100 credit card numbers for, for a dollar. That's dollars. correct. It's very inexpensive. But healthcare records have all the information someone needs to emulate your identity. So that's why they're such a target. That's correct. Yeah. And recently, we've been seeing some... Uh, pretty sophisticated attacks uh, for ransomware. So uh, the latest one, well, we all know about the uh, Word attachment or Office document that's laden with uh, uh, a macro 
that injects into your computer, launches code, and you're screwed. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we, we can analyze an attachment and look for ransomware in the macro. Uh, these signatures change every, less than every 60 seconds. So the old school approach of downloading uh, a virus signature file no longer works yeah. on ransomware sure. because they're changing the code on the fly. So that doesn't work anymore. But now they get it, took it one step further and they're sending a link. Uh, so the email does not have an attachment, but it has a link. Mm -hmm. And they'll insert careful wording to make you want to open it, either you owe me money or here's some money, mm -hmm. basically invoice. And <laughs> that link auto downloads and auto opens the macro with the Office document. Ouch. And so now what we've done is um, with these links, we're for our customers because we provide inbound security and inbound email encryption, we are um, unpacking the link on the fly, in memory, searching for presence of an attachment with macro, mm. and then we're able to find if it has <clears throat> malicious content in it or not, and then we'll just, we'll just prevent that message from being delivered. It's computationally expensive, but um, you know, that's what we need to do to stay on top of things. So we've, yeah, and the, we've and, done that. And these macros are fairly insidious. You wouldn't necessarily even see them. If you were to get the Adobe document or the Word document and open it yourself, it's going to run in the background. It's going to go try to hide itself, depending on what it's for. And you're not going to even know that you've done that. You may know that the document's fraudulent that you've gotten. But, you know, by and large, the, yeah. uh, the, the user may not know. And sometimes they're, they're sending in... Um, just crypto mining software, things like that. There's all kinds of things people would like to use your computer for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they really want your credentials, don't get me wrong. Yeah. So um, can you tell us, um, so you said computationally expensive. So you've got, um, you know, you've got stuff coming through. Um, you, you, you know, you, you're in the AWS environment? Yes. Amazon environment. So you've got um, scalable CPU, scalable memory, scalable yeah. storage. So all this stuff's dynamically happening. Yeah. Um, how do you budget for that? You know, how do you... How do you know what it's going to cost you on, a, oh, on the man. day when the ransom world goes nuts? Does your yeah. computation cost go up double or what our, happens? Our <laughs> bill is getting up there. We've got probably 50 instances in two data regions with auto scaling in place. Uh, it's getting uh, wow. to be a bit complex now. Is there a much of a delay when you when you perform that service for the customer? I mean, because obviously it's worth whatever delay, better, better than getting the, the, the bad macro. So if we're doing it right, we're doing it under a minute. Um, That's pretty good. So yeah, and we're doing, I think about seven or eight million uh, encrypted emails a month now. So wow. we've got some decent traffic. Wow. The market leader is doing 30 million a month and we're doing eight. I hope to catch them by the end of this year. That's <clears> awesome, congratulations. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear Powbox is growing. I um. I, I kind of wonder if, if uh, is that a, so let me ask you a question, is that sort of a bolt-on service? So do you have a, a, when you come in and talk to somebody about the problems that can occur, do you have a sort of a tiered offering or do you, you, un, you do all of that scanning for everyone that's a, a customer? Yeah, so uh, we'll, it's, it's, cus, it's for all customers. Uh, so we'll change the MX record, which routes all inbound email through our system first. Okay. And we scan for malicious content and you know, we encrypt the message if an encrypted connection is available. And then we'll set the outbound gateway mm -hmm. for the customer. So all that, all remote email goes through our system as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, we enforce um, AES 128 or 256 bit encryption sure. on all outbound email. That's, so that's how we do it. That's awesome. So do you have any data on the percentages of stuff that you're seeing come through? Is 5% of it bad? 10%? Remember, oh. I remember back in the PAL spam days, remember yeah. PAL spam was your first <coughs> one. And spam was going nuts, and yeah. I, I think you stayed up and did it in one night, is what I recall. You <laughs> climbed out from under the desk, and Pal Spam was born. I was like, he's like, I built a spam filter. I'm like, really? At, I was at your office. You remember that? Good I mean, memory, so, and yeah. so, and and back then it was like spam was starting to become ten or twenty percent of all traffic. It's like, oh my gosh! And I, yeah. spam is probably still really bad. But do you guys have metrics on it's, what you see? It's still eighty percent spam or garbage. Spam, oh, virus, oh, ransomware, so, so phishing stuff attack. That you reject. Eighty percent of the email on the internet is just rubbish. Um, when when you're uh, de when you detect that, do yeah. you know if it's from? Is it some someone's been compromised and then someone's trying to send stuff with their email, or do you? So do you alert them? Hey, you know, you're looks like you've been compromised. Like, how would I know if I um, was sending if I sent bad a, a, a virus attached email through your system? Would you know, hey, Andrew, someone, someone's on your computer that's infected you or something? Or and do you, has there feedback from me? Or do you just, you don't want to deliver it, obviously. 
Uh, do you send a message, this is not going to be delivered because it was found to be infected? What, what do you, how do you alert people? The, the level of sophistication now is, is pretty impressive. Okay. Um, we were previously looking at domain names. Uh, this is something we built in-house. So we'd say, hey, <clears throat> this domain name was created four hours ago. Why is it sending email? Mm. We, we don't want to talk to you. <clears throat> so that worked pretty well. Now, these spammers, they're, they're reusing domain names that they bought like six years ago. That they just have on file. Because everyone's forgotten those were bad. <laughs> yeah. And then their wow. IP is, is legit. It's, not, mm -hmm. it's on a neutral IP, neutral domain name. Uh, it, it's pretty sophisticated. I wouldn't be surprised if these are nation state based attacks. I mean, just. Oh, I'm sure. And then they'll. The, Especially into our healthcare system. I mean, I'm, I'm confident that they want in there. And then on these malicious links, they'll actually, uh, we've seen them like hack into, say, uh, a university website and in a subfolder plant all the malicious content. Mm -hmm. So now this link is pointing at a legitimate, you know, website of a mm -hmm. .edu, but it, in one specific subfolder, it's been compromised and they mm -hmm. haven't figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. So the link is legit. And, and then people are going there and pulling down bad, pulling the, down malware. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Unsuspecting. It's uh, pretty sophisticated. Yeah, the nation state <laughs> actors. So we had uh, DHS, NSA, uh, a big conference here just in Hawaii just on Wednesday this yeah. week. And the... Basically, the nation state actors, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, yeah. um, basically NSA can deal with them, the rest of us can't, <laughs> was kind of how they, yeah. they left us. Now, those guys are sharing their intel uh, with FBI, DHS, that they're pushing out to the consumer space, but yeah. it's we're, too slow. we're almost indefensible, I, right? I, I mean, against those. I've seen DHS present. They're too slow. Yeah. They, this information sharing, they're too slow. Yeah. I've seen it. They, they're too slow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the former DHS head, I think it was Jay Johnson, mm -hmm. he's on record saying email is the number one threat vector on the internet, sure. and I strongly agree with him. Um, yeah, th I mean, th these signatures are changing every 58 seconds, and there these guys go. are taking a week to exchange information. It's, it's too slow. So, <clears throat> the lesson learned here today, get some encrypted email if you don't know how, get a hold of Powbox, let them help you out. Um, it's really important that you pay attention. These are the things everyone's talking about. Your employees are a problem. You yourself may be a problem uh, with your cyber hygiene, your cyber insurance, your handling of email. So get some help because security matters. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.